cannot hope since lost. Your mind can no longer calculate solution. God steps in. I said, when your mind fails, you are no longer to put together how it will work out. God steps in. When you are not able to put together, your mind can no longer, you know, arrange them. Add one plus one to be two anymore. God steps in. If only you allow him to step in, he will step into your matter. I see him stepping into your matter in the name of Jesus Christ. The heart head is falling. Is a cut the stick. Where did they take cut the stick? What did they use? Divine intervention. You are too narrow-minded thinking of how God would do it. God said, I'm bigger than you. Stop thinking for me. Stop imagining how I will do it. Stop imagining how you will get a job. Stop imagining how you will get married. Stop imagining it. Stop looking at the sizes of men. Look at the bigness of your God. Very quickly, divine intervention. Divine intervention is an act of God that causes good things to happen and stop bad from happening. Divine intervention is an act of God, an act of God that causes good things to happen. May good things continue to happen to you. If you are that person, stand up and say, Amen, if you are the one. I say, may good things continue to happen to you. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy shall follow me and follow you. In Jesus' name be seated. Amen. An act of God that causes good things to happen and stop the bad from happening. Bad things will not happen to you. This month, next month, all the days of your life. Amen. Divine intervention is a miracle. Unusual victory. Uncommon testimony. Uncommon testimony. Unusual victory. A miracle. An act of God that causes good things to happen and stop bad from taking place. Even when men gang up against you, they'll discover that the gang up turn around against them. Is somebody hearing me? Hmm. Haman's, Haman's gallow became the gallow he was hanged. Kaliko so koriba kandaria. Every arrangement of the enemy against you and your destiny may boomerang on them. Every false accusation against you may boomerang on them. All who smile with you in the daytime and pick up a dagger in the night, may they dagger themselves. Come on, somebody shout, Amen! Those who expect God's intervention don't give up. Number two, those who expect interventions are helpful. Those who expect God's intervention never give up, never give up. Number two, they are very hopeful. They know there is light at the end of the tunnel. Last week I read Luke chapter 5, we saw a man who was washing his nets. Peter and his colleagues, men, they were washing their nets, hopeful for another day. They had toiled all night. They caught nothing. But they were hopeful for another day. They did not tear off the net. They did not throw off the net. But they just repackaged it. And Jesus met them washing the net. May the Lord meet you hopeful for tomorrow. Those who expect God's interventions are positive. They are positively driven. They know there is hope. When they have flat tire, they are never flattened. They pick up the spare. They know there is hope for tomorrow. Those who expect God's intervention are focused. They are not distracted by their present circumstances. Challenges becomes their foundation for rising. 
And those who expect God's uh, intervention are thankful. They have a thankful heart. Oh, again, Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus where everyone was accusing him falsely. If you had come on time, this would not have happened. No, oh, the friends, oh, they accused him. And he just lifted up his eyes and voice and said, God, I'm thankful to you. Because there is hope. Hallelujah. Are you still there? There is hope. If you have hope, say, I have hope. I hope. Amen. Amen. You remember Isaiah 43, 13, New Living Translation. From eternity to eternity. From eternity to eternity, he is God. No one can snatch us out of his hands. No one cannot do what he has well done. No one can do it. That's the hope of the Christian. That's the hope of the believer. We have hope. When you look at this nation, there's nothing to be hopeful for, but we have hope because our hope is in God. The one that can fix our nation is in heaven. He will do what we ask him to do because we have faith in him. Amen. amen. Come on, say amen. amen. Last week, we saw a man who was hopeful and Jesus came. He gave his boat to Jesus Christ. He used it. And at the end, Jesus never leaves a man stranded whom he have used his boat. They say, what will be our reward, we who are following you? We have left our parents. We have left our fathers, our mothers, and everyone around us. We left them to follow you. What will be our reward? Well, reward? Reward? All these years you have been with me, have you lacked anything? Master's response was so simple. Have you lacked anything? Do you know how I took care of your feeding? Did you, did you buy any food? Did you go for hunting again to catch all those animals to feed? I took care of you. There's no one. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. Genesis 20. Very quickly, we're going to pray another prayer, and I will take you to where we are today. Genesis chapter 20. Abraham journeyed from there to the south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shaw and stayed in Gerar. Two. And now Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister, and Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah from him. But God came to Abimelech in the night when he was dreaming and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man. Because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. She's another man's wife. That's not the... That's leading me to where I want to, us to pray. Verse 18. For the Lord had closed all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Wait a minute. Go back to verse 1. Go back to verse 1. Abraham journeyed from there to south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shaw and stayed in Gerah. Verse 2. Abraham said of Sarah, Oh, his wife, she's my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerah, sent and took Sarah. He didn't even waste time. Picked her up. He didn't know he was carrying uh, <laughs> uh, what, what, a time bomb. Time bomb. He carried time bomb, put in the house. But God came to Abimelech in the night and said to him, You are a dead man. You are a dead man. Yes, God can kill him. Fantastic. God can deal with him. But look at what happened in verse 18. That's what happened in verse 18. The Lord had closed up all the wounds of the house of Abimelech because of who? Of Sarah, Abraham's wife. All the wounds. Wait a minute. Abimelech was the guy who was guilty, who, took, who was uh, lost in after another man's wife and took the woman. But God came and closed all wounds. Wait a minute. Abimelech sin. God closed down what? All. And said, that womb will not be opened except Abraham prayed. He said, go and meet Abraham to pray for you. What is the issue? Turn to somebody. Ha. Say, imagine. Tell him, imagine. <laughs> Those who were sleeping on their own, they were not part of that. They were not part of the deal. But God crushed all of them. He said, because Abraham is a covenant child. 
Every member. There may be somebody now who has behaved like Abimelech now and, and, and then uh, calamity is happening here and there. It will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up. Stand up one minute. Stand up one minute. Stand up one minute. Did you see why your members of family have to be saved? Do you see those who are your best friend have to be saved and know God very well? Look at the, the transgression. How he entered into the home. The home of those who were just on their own. They didn't know why, how that calamity came upon them. They just found out that nobody was giving better anymore. And Abimelech did not tell them that Nami Duamu, for where? Is somebody here to man? Say, Father, Father deliver, us deliver us from the sins, from the sins of, our of our friends, acquaintances, acquaintances all around us. All around us. Deliver, deliver us from them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May their mistake mistake. not become our mistake. In Jesus' name. name. Shout amen. Amen. Please be seated. Some persons just got delivered. Second Kings chapter 1. Second Kings. Chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 1. The sons of the prophet said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered to them, What did he answer? Go. Elisha said, Go. Then one said, please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. He answered, I will go. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I want to marry this story to the story of last week. Where we read Luke chapter 5. It was that the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. That he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Two. And saw two boats standing by the lake. Two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. That means nothing was in the boat. They caught nothing. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boats. When he had finished. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets for a catch. But Simon answered, ah, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. At this point, Jesus intervened. Go back to 2 Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. This is a reflection of Matthew 6, 31. The sons of the prophet said to Elijah, See now, the place where we are is too small for us. Verse 2. Let us go to Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, Go. What did he ask them to do? Go. Just go. Go and do. I give you permission to go. But one of them said, Ah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go with us. That was the saving point. Go with us. <laughs> Go with us. Never you take a journey without the master. Never you undertake a journey without who? The master. Go with us. Mm. He said, I will go. Verse 4. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan and called down trees. Five. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. He cried out, alas, master, it was borrowed. Problem started. So the man of God said, where did it fall? Now, the man of God said what? Where did it fall? Where, 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 where? You know they asked him, follow us. If they have left him at home, they would have been looking for communication gadget to call. Master, we are in trouble. But wisely as we're going, they said, Master, come follow us. The master said, I will follow you. And while they were there, hmm, the 
asked her father. So the man of God said, where, where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it into there. And he made the iron float. Huh? Wait a minute. What floated? Iron. <laughs> Where are the physicians ah, and all this? That's against the uh, achievement. This principle, it cannot. So he threw it there and he made the iron wall float. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? Where? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it there and he made the iron hair what float. Wait a minute. Where? And yesterday the Lord was saying to me, he said, there's somebody who has head has fallen. Here. And that has been the tears. But because you are in church and because you are in Christ, and you have asked God to be ahead of you, the axe head will float again. Now, who did he call on? He called on the man of God. Who do you call on? Who do you call on when things are not working? I hope we are ready now today. Who did you lean on when all hope seems lost? They got permission from the man of God. Fantastic. They went on the journey. They were cutting the, uh, the, the beam and the axe head fell off. Without the axe head, what will happen? You can't continue. Without the axe head, you are hopeless. Completely hopeless. And you know, Elisha is a type of Christ. So they brought the master in. I said, the master has fallen. He said, relax. Where is the place? He it says, here. But I imagine them wondering now. You, don't, you didn't understand what we said. That the axe head fell into where? The water. It's not a lake. The waters. They didn't describe the water. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure that thing, because of the, 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 the difference between the weight of the axe head and the water, it has to do what? It will sink. The master said, where did it fall? He said, it's here. He said, okay. Cut the beam. Cut that stick. Where is it? He said, master, I said, axe head fell down. Inside the water. It's a cut stick. Sir, the axe head fell into the water. Cut stick. Sir, the axe head fell into the water. The master said, cut what? The stick. Ah. You are not getting the, 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 the thing that's happening. The thing to cut the stick has fallen into the water. You understand what I'm talking now? Huh? The axe said to cut the stick has fallen what? into the water. You are saying cut stick. What are you talking about? <laughs> Is somebody following me? So the man of God said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he, he, so he cut off what? A stick and threw it there and he made. Wait in the day, cut the stick. The axe head has what? Falling. And now, he said, cut the stick to do what? We are talking about divine intervention. When all hope seems lost, your mind can no longer calculate solution. God steps in. I said, when your mind fails, you are no longer to put together how it will work out. God steps in. When you are not able to put together, your mind can no longer, you know, arrange them, add one plus one to be two anymore. God steps in. If only you allow him to step in, he will step into your matter. I see him stepping into your matter in the name of Jesus Christ. The axe head is falling. He said, cut the stick. Where did they take cut that stick? What did they use? 
divine intervention. You are too narrow-minded, thinking of how God would do it. God said, I'm bigger than you. Stop thinking for me. Stop imagining how I would do it. Stop imagining how you would get a job. Stop imagining how you would get married. Stop imagining it. Stop looking at the sizes of men. Look at the bigness of your God. I shared a testimony of a woman we have prayed for for years. You know, and we didn't give up. 60. She's celebrating her 60th birthday this year and she's getting married. It came to a time we said, okay, adopt a baby and she adopted the baby. Oh, yes, okay, yes. And that kept her. But somebody showed up and said, I love you. What? 60 years. 60 years. She kept herself a virgin. She said, my husband will come. That's what God said. She faithfully served in the church, doing very well in the church. And people are wondering, where is your God? He said, my God will soon show up. Hey, Alex, come, 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 come. Stop thinking with your small mind how God will do it. You don't know, your, your mind is too small to think of, to calculate for God. You know before calculator came, eh? 121 times 121, you know how long, that long calculation. 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1. 1 times 1, 1. 1 times 2, 2. 1 times 1, 1. 2 times 1, 2. 2 times 2, 4. 2 times that, that. You know at the end of the day, the page is finished. But we calculate your 1 times 1 in one second. In, we never, Andy, Andy, around here. We never knew that that was possible. Did you do long calculation? Yes, sir. You did my panties. Okay. One, two, one times one, two, one. One, two, one, two, four, two, one, two, two. At the end of the day, you, you rule. Add uh, one, two, do, do. Then they will not complicate the matter. I say 171 times four, two, one. Ah. Uh-uh. You will add and add and add and add. That's how we used to calculate. All of you who went to school those days had to calculate. If I ask my son now one time, one time, one time, he said, give me your phone. <laughs> she, he picks up the phone, just go to the calculator, one to one, he just give me the answer in split second. That's what God is saying, Andy. God says, stop thinking of how I will do it because I am faster than calculator. I am faster than the calculator, you know. I am. We never knew that it can be as easy as that calculator. But God said even that calculator is too slow for what I can do. Hey! Too slow. You don't have a child? Stop calculating for him. How he would do it. Hey, hey, hey. Makata You don't have a job? Stop thinking for God how he would do it. Put the matter in his hands. Carry him along. Carry him along. It's a master. The axe head is what? Falling. That's it. Stop calculating how the contract will be signed. Stop calculating about the promotion. Nobody is being promoted here. It has never been. Nobody will be promoted. You will be an exception. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking saying this morning? Stop thinking how God will heal that sickness. He said, Those who seek this sickness, they die by it. Ah. God said, you, you are too small. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. That the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways. We don't think a lie. I am far beyond. Calculator is too small for me. My brain, God says, My brain is faster than the calculator. In Uniben in those days, we have the mainframe computer. They will give us an assignment. Hey, 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 Fortran, Fortran 77. We will go in there, put it in. Once the machine is hot, it brings error, 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 error. You report the input it back again. The, 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 it's a mainframe, big, huge. We all line up. You come into again, come. But now you don't need a mainframe again. Okay? Everything is been so programmed. And God says those things that are so programmed, oh, cool. they are even too slow for me. Me, I am faster and smarter than all of them. Everybody stand up. Hallelujah. You may not know how. You may not know when. But he will do it again. 
I say you may not know how, you may not know when, he will do it again. Pick up, pick up the microphone. You may not know how, you may not know when, he will do it what? Again. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The reason why they went in the night to fish, because night is when they catch them. But when Jesus appeared there, he was not in the night. <laughs> it was not in the night though. Jesus is greater than the night he is the author and the finisher you may not know how you may not know when but he will everyone in your family has never been married and so what you are different your DNA is connected to heaven it's not connected to the earthly where fell it? Go ahead. 